With this camera apple tutorial, you'll learn the North Khaki Lacky way of making the ultimate Easter caramel apples. Our method guarantees that the caramel will stay attached to the apples for up to weeks, giving you plenty of time to enjoy your treats. To ensure that the caramel adheres perfectly to the apples, we suggest prepping them with our candy apple cleaning method. Honey child, the way they put wax on these apples, you better clean those apples like candy apples. This involves mixing one fourth a cup of lemon juice, two tablespoons of baking soda, and one tablespoon of salt. Bring that to a boil with this simple step. You will have the perfect caramel apples in no time. So why wait? Start making your delicious caramel apples today. Unsalted butter. I'm gonna add two sticks because everything is pretty much one cup. Let your butter melt. Add one cup of brown sugar and one cup of white granulated sugar. Also add one cup of light corn syrup. You can go ahead and give your caramel mix a stir before your light corn syrup and add it. Nothing is never better than homemade, especially this homemade caramel. Add one cup of sweetened condensed milk. Give it a stir. This is that butter vanilla. I use this pretty much in everything. I'm giving it one and a half teaspoons and add a pinch of salt. Stir and let this cook. Okay, I'm in my first five minutes here. This is what it looks like. Okay, this is 10 minutes. Honey child, this is 15 minutes into the game. 15 minutes on the clock, y'all. It's 15 minutes on the clock, clock, clock. So the consistency is getting thick here. I have my stove on about four and a half. It's between the four and a half and five. I'm gonna give it about five more minutes. I don't even have a candy thermometer out. Just to check, I've been making this for so long, so. I pretty much can tell, and you guys will too. You'll be able to tell by the color and the consistency when your caramel is ready. So everybody's stove is not the same. That's for sure. I may need to take these off at 18 after. This is getting really thick. Okay, I have taken my caramel off the stove. I am going to give this about eight to 10 minutes. You don't need to go out 10 minutes with this caramel because this is the perfect Southern homemade caramel. It stays soft and chewy, but firm at the same time to stick on your apples. So right here, I am testing one apple. You can always test one apple to see if it's ready. And baby, this caramel is ready. This is that North Kakalaki. Look at that caramel. Well, that's some good stuff. Scrape the bottom of your apple until you don't see any caramel dripping. And you've pretty much done a pretty good job. once you've done that, especially if you're going to dip your caramel apples in chocolate. You don't want that big caramel at the bottom. There's not going to be any breakdown or anything like that because this is going to be covered with chocolate. See all that caramel? Not only that, this is that North Khaki Lackey caramel, so it holds its own weight. It doesn't even break down like that. The best way to explain this caramel is soft and chewy and firm. I cook my own food. I don't need no chef, I'm from North Carolina. I go get the, my own groceries. The best way to tell you is to try mm. this caramel yourself. Look at this good, good, good homemade North Kekalaki. This that North Kekalaki. So again, with this caramel um, recipe, after eight to 10 minutes, you can go ahead and dip. You don't have to worry about your caramel being thin because it's too hot or anything like that. This caramel firms up really, really well. Look at that, perfect. Look at that color. Just everything is so, 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 so delicious. The best thing you can do is try this caramel apple mm. recipe yourself. Mm. <laughs>
honey child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honey, is that North Kekalecki caramel? <laughs> if you have tried this caramel apple recipe, let me know down in the comments how this caramel apple recipe worked out for you. The good thing about this North Kekalecki caramel is that it firms up really well and it stays soft and chewy. Let's speed this up. I'm sorry. I'll probably eat one or two. It's really, really hard not to eat these. So if you're making these for a customer, you better have three or four more apples to the side because these are just that good. So this one got extra caramel. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm, mm, mm. You better get one of these. You better get one of these. It's so it's firm. Mm, mm, mm. I can't help it. I don't like making these. You can put it. You can see, mm. you can see how soft it is. Mm. And it has been sitting. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like making these because I end up eating pretty much half of them. These are for us, so it doesn't matter. But in those bags of apples, it's only like eight apples now. They went from 12 to like eight apples. Mmm, mmm, honey child, look at that North Kekalecki. <laughs> I can't help it. Let me put this caramel apple closer up to the camera. I'm sorry. I am getting ready to eat another apple. These are so good. I need to watch my weight before I get out of control here. One or two times, and that caramel is firm. Look at that. Now I am going to dip these caramel apples in white chocolate. I am using Ghirardelli. I use this because it melts well and it tastes very good. Okay, so we got some um, Ghirardelli. We got our Ghirardelli white vanilla flavored melting wafers. They don't make those big bags no more. It's not even 16 ounces. It used to be 16 ounces. It's now 10 ounces. Okay, so I'm going to drop probably uh, a cap full of vegetable oil. We're going to use that maybe one, no more than two. And I'm using vegetable oil because this is what most people have. So basically, I'm just coating this, coat the wafers with the vegetable oil. So this has been in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's melting a little bit. You can see where it's melting down at the bottom. We're gonna do another 30 second interval on this white chocolate. Okay, this is the second, 30 seconds. It's melted, I'll say it's melted. So, I just need to stir it up. Sometimes you have to stir it up. You don't want to over melt it. Okay, it's silky smooth. It's real silky smooth, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. So, we're going to get these dipped before... I end up eating all of them. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. So basically, I just take my caramel apple and I just swirl it around in this good, good chocolate. 
You don't have to worry about your caramel dripping down in the chocolate or anything like that. This caramel, um, it firms up pretty good. And I just scrape it on the side. And it doesn't come off. You don't have to worry about this coming off at all. You don't have to worry about this caramel dripping. Once it's not dripping any more chocolate, I'll just lay it um, on my parchment paper. You can just rotate that caramel apple and that good chocolate. I'm just scraping on the side. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm just scraping any extra chocolate on the side. And if you want to look at the bottom, this is what it looks like. You, know, you don't have any caramel dripping. If you have extra chocolate on the paper, once you lay it down, that's pretty decent. hard not eating these things up it's like real hard let me push this back so you can see and then I might tap a little bit just to make sure yeah, there's some more chocolate still on here. And then what you can do to test it, what I like to do is I lay it down. And if any chocolate starts seeping, like right here, I'll come over and just maybe on the side, let me show you, like right here, and just take my apple like that and get all that chocolate and then I'll come back and just I can sit it down move this one so you can see I'm just gonna sit that down right there you just continue to repeat the process by dipping your caramel apples in your white chocolate make sure you scrape off the extra chocolate so it looks like you want to get that chocolate you want to scrape it so when I scrape I scrape like that trying to get the extra chocolate so I don't see any chocolate dripping I like to take it and do this just getting the extra chocolate off and I'm gonna come and put it right here to move it out the way I got these sweet shop icing decoration bunny ears from Walmart I thought they were just too cute to pass by pouring in the leftover chocolate from the apples into a bottle I used the chocolate that I had left over from dipping my apples and just poured it in a bottle. You can use a Ziploc bag or a piping bag, whatever you have. I just didn't have any bags available. <laughs> chocolate on the back of the ear. Like that. I'm going to hold it till it attaches. Okay. Same thing, same thing with the other ear. Try not to press down too hard. There we go. I have forgot to put on my paper straws. Let's make these fondant bows. Okay, I have my bow silicone mold. I'll put it down in the description box. It may not be the same color because I've had this a long, long time. 
If your fondant is sticky, use some gum text powder or talos powder. You can also use cornstarch if you don't have those to dry out the fondant. Stamping the back of your fondant bow with your treat brush with barely a little water and you apply your bow to the ears. Since y'all love these bows so much, I'm going to put bows on these. I'm not going to put them down here. I'm going to put them up here because there's too much going on right here. So I just have some, um, I just have a strip of ribbon and a gold tie. So what I'm going to do is just, like I usually do, is just take this and loop it like that. Bring this part to the middle, bring it down, and just pinch it like that. And I put my tie on, my twist tie. And I twist it in the back of the ribbon. Just like that. Then I take this and I just fluff it out. I'm going to cut the back of the tie so it won't be so long. I take my scissors and I just cut that part very short push it back that's the back of the bow then i turn this around i'm gonna cut the tail i'm gonna cut the other side i'm gonna cut go over to about right here And I take my glue gun and put a dab of glue on the back. I attach the candy apple bow like this on the candy apple stick. And there's your bow. If you have enjoyed this candy apple tutorial, make sure you stay tuned to watch my next candy apple tutorials coming up right here on Candy Apple TV. I'll see you in a few seconds over in my next video.